So I'll just show some examples and try to see why, um, you know, what benefits um, I guess we've gained from the use of macro XRF scanning on some of the objects we've analysed. In this specific case, it's just a small fragment, and I'm using it as an example to illustrate the importance of knowing what to look for and what to look at when you're looking through your data. So for example, in this case, I've put up two maps, one for tin and one for lead. Historically <coughs> speaking, you're at a total of four pigments in which I can find these two um, elements. Um, so mosaic gold, which is tin sulfide, red lead, which is lead tetroxide, lead white, lead carbonate, and lead tin yellow. These are the four pigments I'm sort of looking for um, when I'm looking at these two maps. Now for ease of analysis, I've combined the two maps. It's not an RGB, it's a GB composite, I guess, just two channels. It really helps to look at them this way because I can um, hypothesize the presence of mosaic gold in the bright green areas where tin is present without lead. So I've got tin, I don't have lead, that's probably mosaic gold. The whitish highlights on the road, whitish in the map, are the areas where both tin and lead are present. So I can um, hypothesize the presence of lead tin yellow. And then all the other areas, which are just blue, um, are going to be either lead white or red lead. And of course, we're short of looking at the image in knowing that an orange area is probably a red lead, although it could contain lead white as well. I don't have a way of, of telling, basically, if there could be both red lead and lead white in some areas. And of course, just the lead map is not gonna, um, is not gonna tell me that. Um, what actually helps to pick up the different pigments is also the fact that I chose the tin K in lead L lines, because I could also choose the tin L and the lead M lines. And that image isn't as good. <laughs> and Roald has mentioned this already, that the, the possibility to choose between different um, lines for the same element. These are the low energy lines. And the image is more noisy for a number of reasons. First of all, there is a lot more overlap between lines of, related to different elements in the low energy area. So for example, if you look um, here, these green areas, um, which correspond to the pink leaves, they don't actually contain tin, they contain calcium, uh, which I found in the red lake. But at that low energy, I'm not able to distinguish between the tin and the calcium line. I've also pretty much lost the tin line here. The, the, the signal is too low, the, the energy is so low that with just a little tin there, the signal doesn't get to the detector, so I've completely lost the highlight here. If I just looked at this, I would say, I wouldn't say that that's Latin yellow, basically. I could miss that pigment entirely. But having two maps from two different lines for the same element can be really useful. And this is an example for, with the with mercury. If I compare the, the low energy lines, that's the image in the center, with the high energy mercury lines on the left, I can see that there are some features, these lines, for example, that don't appear here at all. And that's it. That's a way to say that these are under reverse of the object, because the high energy lines penetrate the parchment and the paint layers on the front and reach the detector. The, uh, the low energy lines for mercury can't do that. They just don't reach the detector from the back. And in this case, I can actually just turn the piece around and look at it. <laughs> so this is trivial. Um, but again, there are many cases where the reverse of an object is not accessible to us. Um, so being able to compare these two is a really good way um, to say something is on the surface, on the front of the object, or rather on the back and inaccessible.